Did you know the Utah Jazz were probably the hottest team in the NBA? I only just figured it out last night when I started seeing more and more people post about it on Twitter. They're 15 and five in their last 20 games. They have the best record in the NBA in the new year at eight and one. And more impressively, those wins aren't just them beating up on some of the worst teams in the NBA. They've beaten the Sixers, Bucks, Nuggets, Lakers. That's impressive. In 2024, they're second in offense and eighth in defense. They're ninth in the West, just half a game behind Phoenix for eighth. Obviously it helps when your best player, Larry Markkinen, returns from injury, but the Jazz have also made some notable adjustments. Colin Sexton is in the starting lineup now. They moved Markkinen to the center position, which always feels like the move for true power forwards. Like I can't think of a true power forward who wouldn't be better as a center nowadays. Because whatever skills you have at the four just become better and better utilized uh, and more impactful when you're the biggest guy out there. So you move him to center, you move Simon Fontecchio into the starting lineup. That happened, I think, right before the new year. And having his shooting at 39% has been a massive boost to the offense. Having the relentlessness of a backcourt of Colin Sexton and Chris Dunn is amazing at both ends. Like those two dudes get after it on defense and they're constantly putting pressure on the rim on offense. And when you surround those two guys with shooters like a Markin and like a Fontecchio, good things happen. And then off the bench, Jordan Clarkson continues to do his thing. Keontae George has shown a lot of really impressive flashes. Steady presence of Kelly Olynyk. Walker Kessler is just kind of there, but I imagine he has to break out of his slump at some point. It's all very impressive, obviously just on the surface, if you just look at the numbers, wow, the Jazz are playing really well. That's really impressive. But I think what's even more interesting about this Jazz surge is, you know, they shake up their roster last year. They trade Donovan Mitchell. They trade Rudy Gobert. Everyone thinks they're going to start tanking for Wemby. But then Lowry Markinen becomes this unexpected all-star. And all of a sudden, they're way more competitive than anyone thought they would be. Not enough to make the playoffs, unfortunately, but they were still hovering in that 30-win range. And then they enter this season, and you kind of think it's going to be more of the same. You don't really know how things are going to go. And they start to really struggle. You start hearing rumors about where Larry Markkinen isn't untouchable. And you think, okay, maybe is it time for the Jazz to start bottoming out? Because as we all know, the worst place you could be as an NBA team is in the middle. But now they're surging, and the team that you previously thought was going to be sellers at the deadline, now you start to wonder like, should they maybe be buyers at the deadline? Because they have so many great pieces highlighted by Larry Markin. And people are talking about him as like, you know, could he be the best player on a championship team? Probably not. Could he be the number two guy? Absolutely. They have a great head coach in Will Hardy, one of the best young head coaches in the NBA. And the biggest compliment I can give him is that he's definitely squeezed more out of this roster than what anyone thought was possible. Like the fact that Chris Dunn is now starting for them and is an impactful starter is impressive and a testament to him as a coach. And obviously it's a testament to Chris Dunn and his resurgence. But if you're the Jazz, yeah, you have this little jolt of electricity, this surge of winning. Like, why not see how far you can take it? Why not? That's the whole point, man. They certainly have the draft picks from both Cleveland and Minnesota to make a big move. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. I think the deadline in a few weeks will tell us a lot about not necessarily the direction they want to go because I do think they want to try to win games when you have an all-star like Larry Markkinen, that seems to be the case. But how aggressive are they going to be at the deadline in adding pieces around the hottest team in the NBA? I think it's gonna tell us a lot about just how much they believe in this team and how confident they are and just where they think this awesome stretch could take them. God damn it, the West is so loaded.